now it's 43. I had a question coming out of chapter 6, number 80. And here we were given info on Terry Vogel, who was a motorcycle racer. And she averaged 129.71 seconds per lap and had a standard deviation of 2.28. So my variable here is the lap time for Terry. All right. And that is a continuous numerical variable, so we're going to go in seconds. We were told it was normally distributed. We were given the mean. We were given the standard deviation. So there are your answers for A and B, right, that we can glean out. And then, like always, I, I've been highlighting my distribution because this N tells me the shape. This tells me what's under the peak. This helps me scale out my x-axis. So if I look, right, I've got a bell curve. I know I'm going to put 129.71 under the peak. And then if I want to get my tick marks, I would add 2.28 and subtract 2.28 from the mean to figure out what those tick marks were. I don't need the tick marks. I just want you to see how that's working. All right, so if we take a look at our graph, again, you see me writing my variable on the x-axis. I label it, give it some units. I put an x here and a p of x here. That's how that always goes. All right, and then I'm going to put 129.71 under that peak. Ooh, some tick marks are left. Let me erase those. Okay, so building from that, part C says find the percent of her laps that are completed in less than 130 seconds. So if I want to go less than 130 seconds, I'll start inside my parentheses and I'll focus on 130. 130 is there, and I want to go less than, so I'm going to go left. If I want to think about that in terms of low to high, that's negative infinity to 130, so that's why you see my low and my high, and then there's my mean and standard deviation. I plug that in and I get about 55%. And that number matches the area I've shaded, right? Because probability is always area under a curve. So there is a connection between the number that, ooh, that erase, between the number that you get from the calculator output and the picture you've drawn. So if you have a moment at the end of a problem, take a look and make sure that those things are matching. Because if they're not, it's a little indicator that something's gone a bit wrong and maybe you can look for a possible error. All right, so part D said, what are the fastest 3% of her laps? So there, if I'm asking for the fastest 3%, right, so for part D, I gave you fastest 3%. When I give you a percent, that's the percentile type of problems. So if I want the fastest 3%, that is actually the third percentile. Now, you might have thought, well, how come, let me write, this is the bottom 3%. You might have thought, well, if I wanted the top 3%, wouldn't I be over here, right? Because in previous problems, we've been doing that complement rule. I, I'm with you there, except when you're talking about races, lower times are the better times. So you actually do want the bottom 3% here. That's when you're fastest. So when I give you that percentile, then you go ahead and you plug in the percentile, mean and standard deviation, and you find out that her fastest 3% of the fastest 3% of her laps were under 100 or 125.422 seconds or lower. The next thing asks you for the middle 80% and we don't have middles on our calculator, all right? Our calculator is only built in on down mode. So if I want the middle, ooh, what is that symbol? Let me erase that. If I want the middle 80%, all right, we have to convert middles to percentiles. So again, if there's 80% in here, by complement, there's 20% outside, which means there's 10% on a side, okay? So that's where I'm getting those three numbers. And now we have to think about this number. Ooh, let me get a pen. This number and this number. What percentiles are at those two cutoffs? So if we think about percentiles, percentiles aren't middles. They're from a certain point on down. So I want these two, like how much area is under the curve from there on down? So let me start here. If I wanted to shade this first part here from there on down, I only have 10%. That's why you see me finding the 10th percentile. All right. Now, if I go from this second cutoff that was up here, because these are the two cutoffs for the middle 80%. If I want to shade all of the area from here on down, I'm shading all of this. Give me a moment to shade. And if I want to shade that, I need to think about 80% and 10%. That's how much area is from here on down. And when you do 80 plus 10, you get 90%. And that's why I have the 90th percentile in there. So that's why I say the middle 80% 
is cut off by the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile. That's what's trapping the middle 80% of the area under that curve. And the numbers you get there are 126.788 and 132.632. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.